Okay, so today we're going to be talking about a really important topic. And this one is called how to become your own ally. And so I'm going to go into the definition of an ally. And it says that an ally is someone that aligns with and supports a cause of another individual or a group of people. And so we want to make sure that when we think of this word ally, that we make certain that we're referencing it in a way that has you having your best interest at heart. We want to make sure we think about team you. <laughs> And we want to make sure that we recognize when sometimes it seems like not only are you not an ally to yourself, but you're your own worst enemy. So if you're watching this, I want you to think about that for a minute. I want you to think, have I ever said those words? And I know that I have. And I know that when I've said those words, oh yeah, I'm my own worst enemy. I don't know if you saw my face, but I looked up and I was like rolling my eyes. And it's interesting because if we were to say those very same words with our tender heart, the parts of us that care the most, the parts of us that actually don't want bad things to happen to us, that we want to succeed in our in our purpose, like what what it is that that is important to us. And, I, and he, I use that word success very, very lightly because sometimes success, the word itself can become a judgment where we might think like, well, I wanna succeed, but then we set these enormously high expectations of ourselves and the high expectations are put there so that we do quote unquote fail. And it's literally like as if there are invisible booby traps being set by yourself when you're in that space where you are your own worst enemy. And so that's why it's going to be important for us today to A, recognize it, because if you're not aware that it's happening and you're not aware that it's a thing, you won't be able to do anything about it. You won't be able to catch yourself in the act. And going back to my eye roll, I want you to really think about when you've said these words and really pay attention to how you said these words. If I change the tone and I looked straight at you and I said, sometimes I'm my own worst enemy, that would feel sad, really sad because why would I want to do that? I mean, I'm me. I'm a human being, last I checked. I am made of skin, right? I've got, <laughs> got skin here. I've got blood going through my veins. My heart's pumping. I feel emotion. And yet, to, to say that I'm my own worst enemy and to say it in a tone where you can feel what the truth is, if I was saying that, very different than if I'm just like joking, you know, like <laughs> I'm my own worst enemy, right? Like that's the way that I know I've said it in the past. And it's almost like a ha ha, like, yeah, I don't care, <laughs> just whatever, right? It changes the feeling. But at the end of the day, if you are saying that and you're not being your own best friend, well, if you don't have your back, then why should anybody else? We sometimes expect people in our lives, our family members, our parents, our siblings, our you know, children, we expect them to treat us really well. Like we want people to be nice to us. In fact, when they're not nice to us, we get really hurt. And then many times we'll actually take that hurt. Sorry, I just want to move this. Um, we'll take that hurt and we'll basically like put
put it in an envelope and seal it up and say like, do not ever open again. Like we're just take this and we, we have our note. We know it's ours. We know it's in there, but we're never opening up that again ever. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to carry a silent reminder in our minds about how very unimportant we are. And so inside of that note, inside of that envelope that's sealed forever, we have the keys to our own friendship because somewhere locked in that letter of what happened to us in our lives, it seems like it just gets stuck there on the page and the ink is like permanent and it's just there forever reminding us about the time when our friend did this to us or when our parent said that to us or when our sibling, you know, went out of their way to, to hurt us purposely. And we take all of those letters and we just kind of keep them and they're like, they're ours, they're our story. We kind of spread them out every once in a while in the memories and we keep them in a container, you know, just to make sure that they're safekeeping. But we never like actually open them and, and look at them with a new set of eyes. And it's very interesting, when I was a teenager, I was uh, very creative in, in my writing. I didn't think I was though, because it was told to me when I was very young um, by my family. I mean, I just, it was something that I knew. It wasn't about me, but my sister was the writer. Like it was in our family that like we knew she was gonna be the writer. And because my sister gave herself that label and all the family understood that she wrote, it felt to me like I couldn't be a writer. Like I did that to myself. Nobody told me that. I did that. And it's interesting because it was something that I started to keep journals when I was a teenager. And it's interesting the things that came out on paper when I wrote and when I went back to look years and years and years and years and years and years later after I went through my journey of self-discovery and when I looked back at those letters and I could really see with empathy the damage that that young girl, that teenager, that 20 year old, that 30 year old, because I didn't start self-discovery until I was in my 40s. When I went back and I looked at, at what was inside of those letters, what was, what was inside of the girl who felt like she had been abandoned the girl whose father died, the girl whose family fell apart after her father died, the girl who got locked up in a mindset thinking that her body was, wasn't good enough and was never going to be good enough, the girl who dieted, the girl who starved herself, the girl who binged, the girl who did everything possible to keep her head above water but always felt like she was drowning, always. That girl was in those letters and when I was able to, me, me now, open my mindset to see how I treated myself and the way that I thought of myself and the things that I told myself, the things that I believed, I wouldn't wish that upon any enemy. The, the way that I made myself feel. And if you're doing this to yourself, trust me when I say you're not being an ally to yourself. And if that's the case, then it, it is going to take a tremendous amount of desire and dedication to change. And I'm not talking about diets. I'm not talking about anything physical. I'm talking about your mind, the way you see yourself, the way that you compare yourself to others, the way that you take your own thoughts and manipulate yourself into believing something that's just not true, just because it happened to you, maybe once, maybe twice, maybe over and over and over again. But the truth is, is that, and uh, this is a quote by Viktor Frankl, between stimulus and response, there is a space. And in that space, you have the right to choose what you want to feel what you want to think. And so if you're always thinking 
I'm my own worst enemy, I'm my own worst enemy, and you kind of make jokes about it, it's time to stop that behavior. Because if there was a little girl standing in front of you, and that little girl had pain, she had been through a lot of stuff, the last thing that you would do is poke at that little girl. You wouldn't do that at all. You would love her. You would help her. And when she turned into a cranky little girl because of all the trauma she had been through, you wouldn't poke her and prod her again and again, more and more. You would allow her to think differently. You would say, this is, this is not the only way that you can think. And so when, when we're thinking about becoming our own ally, we have to really think about what our purpose is. And so many times what we try and do is we try and we try to change our habits first. But if we go at it that way, we will never be able to align ourselves with the purpose of what it is that we want to do. Like when you're an ally, it's because you're like on the same team. You're going for, you're driving towards something. There's a purpose. There's a passion. There's something that it is that you know that you have to have and you can see it so clearly and so evidently that it's almost as if the future vision of yourself is actually in your memory. And even though you might not be there yet, you can see it so much like it happened yesterday, even though it's about to happen tomorrow. And that's really what needs to happen. That's what needs to transpire in order for you to go from being your worst enemy to an ally, to your friendship with yourself. This is where you need to take your own hand and you need to actually see that you are walking hand in hand with yourself. You're not walking in front of yourself. You're not walking behind yourself. You're just walking side by side. Take your own hand, hold it, look at it, get a visual, see, see the friendship, see your hand come together, look at it, look at who you are. And this is really important to connect with yourself. If you've never done a body scan before, start to sit quietly and just begin to think. Put a vision of a warm sun in your mind, just for a second. And then think of that warm sun and go through your body piece by piece. Envision the warmth of the sun hitting your feet. Envision the warmth of the sun going between your toes moving up your legs, the sun's on your knees, over your thighs, right through your midsection, up through your spine, your stomach, your chest, your arms, up your neck, your face, your head, and then just picture it over you, a warm, glowing feeling over your body and go piece by piece. Because when you want to fulfill a purpose for yourself, you want to be able to align yourself with the truth. And the truth is, is that you are not a separated mess. <laughs> you absolutely 1000% know how to align yourself with your best interest. And if you're telling yourself you don't know, that's a lie. It just is. It's not true. And the reason why I know it's not true is because I know that you know how to take care of others. And because I know you know how to take care of others, and that is the truth, you would not be able to know how to take care of others and then not know how to take care of yourself. In fact, sometimes we take care of others first so much so that we can subconsciously not take care of ourselves. And then we end up subconsciously blaming them. 
even though we don't want to. And even though we would give the shirt off our backs for all of those external people. But at the same time, if we're not putting on our own oxygen masks first, then we don't have a leg to stand on. And so this is where I want to encourage you to decide for yourself, what is your purpose? So many people talk about surface level problems, you know, well, I want to get my health. I want to, you know, I want to lose some weight. I want to fit into my jeans. I have a, my, you know, daughter's getting married, such and such. I want to, I want to lose a couple of pounds for the wedding, whatever, you know, and, and it's like, okay, okay. But at the same time, if we can take it down a notch and we can really feel how we feel as a human being and really connect the dots between that. Because if you can show up better for yourself, how much better will you be for your family to support them, to support your children, to support your spouses, to support your parents? How much better of a human being will you feel like? Because let's face it, even if you are the nicest human being in the entire world on the outside, if you're not taking care of yourself on the inside, you will suffer for it. And in exchange, your family and friends will suffer too, because as much as you try and hide this, you can't, it's not possible. So they will know, and they will always think, wow, I wish she would take better care of herself. You know, you're always doing for other people. If you could just take care of yourself, like relax a little, like you don't have to have everything be so perfect. Like think about what your family and friends tell you and think about what it is that they critique you on, that they, they share criticisms of and think about where they might be accurate and then be able to see from the other side what the argument is and be able to understand when you're thinking, well, yeah, yeah, I could take care of myself, but then X, Y, and Z wouldn't get done. And then see where all of that amounts to you being unkind to yourself. And if that's happening, then we have a reverse of order here. And we're trying to change our habits, but we're not understanding the reason why we're not standing tall within our own self and being our own best friend to begin with. So we really have to hone in on the purpose as to why it is that you're not making these decisions that are aligning with your best interest. Why are you self-sabotaging? Why are you your own worst enemy? What's that about? So um, I'm gonna give you a couple of little quotes here. Um, this one says, people do not decide their futures. They decide their habits and their habits decide their futures. So I really want you to think about this. I really want you to be able to say to yourself like, what is it that I choose to do on a regular basis that causes me to feel X, Y, and Z about myself? And then be able to take it a step further and circle the X, Y, and Z part and write yourself a note, ask yourself a question. Why do I feel X, Y, and Z about myself to begin with? What's that about? And so let's begin to open up some new headspace to be able to see if I felt differently about X, Y, and Z about myself, would I still have this habit? Would that still be a thing? If I was able to sleep soundly at night because I wasn't up cranking at the wheel here, worrying about all kinds of things that are, haven't happened yet or worrying about things that have happened in the past, if I wasn't stewing about relationships that bother me, if I wasn't, you know, contaminating my mindset 24 hours a day with the thought of food, could I sleep? Would I then have the problem of getting up in the middle of the night and eating? 
Probably not. So that's a great way for you to be able to understand internally it's not about the food it's not like oh i'm just going to padlock the refrigerator no it's more about like why am i being mean to myself and feeding myself this steady flow of negative thoughts that are keeping me up all night that are contaminating my mind that are poisoning my soul and then because of that now i'm up at three o'clock in the morning eating chocolate chips out of the freezer you know out of the refrigerator or whatever right um, this one says success is about doing the right thing, not about doing everything right. The trick to success is to choose the right habit and bring just enough discipline to establish it. That's it. That's all the discipline you really need. So sometimes we get into this all or nothing mindset. We think that we have to do it all or we have to do or, or, or we're doing nothing. And that's not really true. And it really, a, a, if you give yourself the freedom to be kind to yourself, to really sit with that purpose, what is the purpose of what you're trying to do, right? If it's just to lose weight and it's just to get into the clothes and all that stuff, that's not a good enough reason because it doesn't help you, whether you're in a size, you know, eight or 18, it doesn't change who you are as a human being. If if when you're in a size 18, if you don't feel good about yourself and you don't feel like you're a nice human being, um, but when you're in an eight, you do feel like you're a nice human being, there's there's something in between that we're missing because, because this shouldn't be a thing. It shouldn't really matter. The feelings that you have within yourself that cause you to be good and kind to yourself should actually be there no matter what. So we want to be able to think about this and we want to be able to establish just enough thoughts in our head to make certain that we're aligning ourselves with our truth. That'll keep you aligned with your integrity. And if you're aligned with your integrity, you will not, you will not betray yourself. Um, the key to productivity is to learn how to say no to anyone or anything that is not directly related to your one thing. So if you can put this thought into your head that your one thing is to make certain that no matter what, that you are going to be a bodyguard of your mindset, that you are going to be a bodyguard to what gets into your body, making certain that there's no enemies, making certain that your hand is not feeding you poison, that you're not hurting yourself with your own hands. <laughs> well, if you can do that, then you'll sit tight with the purpose of what it is that you're trying to do. And again, please don't put your weight into this. Because you thinking about being two sizes smaller is not going to keep you out of the Doritos, period. It's just not. It doesn't matter. Yeah, maybe it will for a little while, but not if you're struggling with what I call a food thing. And if you have a food thing, it basically means that you're using food to get yourself to satisfy a deep-rooted feeling that's already inside of you. And if we don't address the deep-rooted feeling, and we don't make that our one thing, our purpose, then everything else, it will just fall to the wayside because you'll forget why you're supposed to be your best friend. You'll forget and you'll forget quickly, which we don't want to do that. Um, the last thing is, oh, and I have one more thing to say. Um, you cannot live in the present because your mind is busy in the past or the future. So make certain that you stay here, you stay present, and you make sure that your intentions are serving your best interests. Because if you're over here or you're over there, you can't focus on the target. And um, that is all I have to say for today, actually. Um, this one went by quickly. So remember be your own ally become your own best friend become on your team we want to be team you 
And uh, if you ever say, I am my own worst enemy, please don't say it with an eye roll. Actually look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself why. Say, why, why am I my own worst enemy? And say it with sincerity and caring and feeling because that's not something that should be said with just a flip it in like, ha ha, that won't serve your best interest. That, that will actually be meant to hurt you. And that would be a shame. That would be a sad thing for you. And I don't want you to do that. So, all right, everybody have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye now.